How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. In this video I'm going to be talking about how I successfully diagnosed a heater circuit fault in an oxygen sensor of a Suzuki. The fault code was P0031 and I'm going to be showing you in this video the step-by-step -step process I used to diagnose and rectify this fault. <laughs> Okay, so the vehicle that I was working on in this video was a Suzuki Swift. It was a 1.5 engine and it was a 2006 model. But this information is relatable to many, many makes and models. The oxygen sensor we're working on is a four wire sensor and the heater circuit side of that is the two same color wires. So it will be these two black wires here and it'll be those two top ones. So that's the heater circuit side. The fact that the fault code is on the heater side, the signal and the low reference do not need testing on this particular fault code because it was the only fault code that was stored on the ECU at the time. If there was other fault codes, you may have to do further testing than that. The fault code that I had on the vehicle was a P0031. There is many other fault codes that's related to a heater circuit as well. The likes of P0030 or 31, um, 36, 37, 38, 42, 43, 44, 50, 51 and 52 are all related to the heater circuit side. So if you have one of those fault codes on your vehicle, the information that I'm going to show you in this video for testing will be the same. Okay, let's get into the testing and how I set about diagnosing this fault. Okay, so the first thing I did before I started into my component testing was I checked the battery voltage. I made sure that I had a good enough battery voltage with the ignition on that it wouldn't be draining too low when I'm carrying out these tests. You always want to make sure that you have good battery voltage before you commence these tests. Okay, so I started about doing my component checks. I have my relevant information here that I'm showing you and if you look it's just sensor 1 that I'll be working on. Sensor 2 down here is the post cat 1. This is the pre cat 1 and this was the one that the fault code was related to. So the first test that I can do is with the uh, oxygen sensor still connected in the harness you back probe uh, pin 4 and the earth and you check for battery voltage so the expected value um, on the results will be between 11 and 14 volts we have the ignition on the uh, vehicle is not running so it's not going to be up on 14 volts we're just expecting a battery voltage reading on that the wire that I'll be back probing is this one here, which is a black and white wire. And as I said, it's on pin four. Once we know we have a good earth and that pin four is showing battery voltage, we can move on to our next test. The next test that I do is on the three and four pins. Those ones and these tests are gonna be carried out with the vehicle in the cool down position. So. Um, after I brought the vehicle in, I let it sit in for quite a while before I started the test because you want to be making sure that you're having the correct um, resistance readings on those. With a coolant temperature of 20 degrees, you would expect to see between 5 and 6 ohms of resistance. The wires that we are going to be looking at is the number three black and red and the number four black and white wires. With those two, we're going to disconnect the oxygen sensor. With the oxygen sensor disconnected, we're going to use our multimeter, check across these pins three and four and see what reading we have. If you look at the results, you can see that we have a no resistance reading at all. It's reading zero where we should expect to see between five and six. For example, if you didn't get the correct voltage when you were carrying out your first check, so if you back probed and you found that you weren't getting any voltage, you may want to go further and check on the ECU and start to back probe on those. Here is a list of the uh, tests that you can do on that and for example, pin number 10 here, if you were to back probe and scope on that, 
you would have the engine idling, engine's already hot, and this would be the expected waveform you would see from that oxygen sensor. The other tests you can do is here, it's related to B46 pin, B57, and B50, which are these pins in that position, and these are the values you would expect to see. The voltage there between 11 and 14, again, is battery voltage, and you would expect to see no voltage in pin 57 and pin 50 when checking these tests. If you were to have the correct voltage up at the ECM and no voltage down at the oxygen sensor itself, you would be looking for a break in the wire along and checking to see where you have lost it. But that is the information. Because I had the correct um, results, at my oxygen sensor and the harness there and the correct voltage i didn't need to go and do any of these tests but if you did those are the tests that you would be carrying out if you hadn't got the correct voltages down there so now that we've seen oxygen sensor number one have a reading of zero i just wanted to show you what oxygen sensor number two so this is a post cat sensor is reading so i've disconnected that and i'm going to check again across on three and four on number two and this time we would be expecting to see a reading of between 11.7 and 14.5 on resistance on that. And as you can see, we have a reading of resistance on that. And that's just to show you that you can do these tests with the parts in place if you are unsure of the results you're getting. And it can give you a clear idea of what is going on with the circuit if you're probing the right ones and doing the right tests. So now that we have all those tests done, I know the oxygen sensor has failed. So I order one and I go about fitting it. Before I set on fitting the oxygen sensor, I just wanted to show you, this is the readings you would expect to see. So with the old one in place, I tested here, it has a reading of zero. I test the new one and as you can see it's reading just over 6 in resistance and that's exactly what I would be hoping to see and we now know that we're going to have a fix. So I'm just on the test drive now, oxygen sensor has been fitted, the diagnostic fault code has been cleared and everything seems to be in order. Uh, we know by the tests we've done that there is no guesswork. The oxygen sensor needed replacing. The resistance, um, the ohms that we would be expecting to see was not there on the test. Uh, I showed you what the new reading was on the new sensor. I also showed you what the post catalytic converter um, sensor 2 was as well and all of them were showing readings so it's taking the guesswork out of the tests we know that the sensor needed replacing it's gone in the fault code is clear and i'm very happy to give this job back to the customer knowing that the oxygen sensor problem has now been resolved uh, i hope you enjoyed this video guys i hope you found it useful if you did please like share comment and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching